Hello guys, in this video, we are going to solve one heat transfer problem taken from the book Sangel. So let us begin. So the question is like consider a large plane wall of thickness L is equal to 0.2 meters and the thermal conductivity of that wall is K is equal to 1.2 watt per meter Kelvin and surface area A is 15 meters square as shown in figure over here. And the two sides of the wall are maintained at constant temperatures of T1, here this T1 120 degrees Celsius and this T2 is 50 degrees Celsius and we need to determine the first like the variation of temperature within this wall like the how the temperature is varying within this wall and the value of temperature at x is equals to 0.1 meters where it will be 0.1 meter directly between these two walls because this wall's thickness is 0.2 meters and the second one is the rate of heat conduction through the wall under steady conditions. So let us solve this question. Actually before solving this question we need to find the heat conduction equation in a large plane wall because we don't know any of the heat conduction equation till now. So I just want to derive this heat conduction equation for the plane wall and then we will proceed accordingly for this question. So for finding the heat conduction equation in a plane wall we have taken into consideration this figure where this is basically the thickness delta x. This is delta x thickness wall which is our main center towards solving the heat conduction equation okay and the area like the direction in which the heat is getting transferred perpendicular to that direction we are having an area a as shown over here this a uh, the density of this material is supposed to be rho and uh, the thickness i've already told delta x of that thin wall the heat transfer rate at distance x like here is x this one is x and this one is this x plus delta x okay and the area at x and area at x plus delta x will be same because the area is not changing with thickness area is constant and uh, the heat transfer rate at x is qx dot and at x plus delta x is qx plus delta x dot that is the heat transfer rate and the specific heat of that material in which we are going to write the heat conduction equation is supposed to be small c okay so these all are the constants or the variables that we are going to use while deriving the heat conduction equation. So for heat conduction equation, let us write the energy balance on this thin wall of thickness, how much? Delta X. So the governing equation from where we are going to start is basically rate of heat conduction at X like over here, the heat which is getting conducted at X like from here as shown by the red arrow or I am drawing the blue arrow like from here the heat is getting conducted at x and then after this we need to subtract this with rate of heat conduction at x plus delta x let me write this whole then I'll discuss it that what is this actually plus of rate of heat generation inside the element of thickness delta x and that must be equal to like this minus of this plus of this must be equal to rate of change of the energy content of the element. So this is what it basically means. We are basically concerned about the rate of change of energy of this element. Okay, this green element, the one which is colored with green. So for that, we need to have rate of heat conduction at X, like the heat which is getting transferred inside this element colored in green. Then the rate of heat conduction, which is going away from this green element, that is at x plus delta x that's why we are subtracting it from this and plus the rate of heat generation inside this element which is colored in green so that will be also plus so this plus this minus of this because these two are the sources of heat which is getting inside this element or which is generated within this element that's why these are in plus but this at x plus delta x the heat is going away like heat is getting conducted away from this element that's why we are subtracting it and as a whole we are getting what rate of change of the energy content of this element. So that's what I've written over here. This is nothing but energy conservation equation. Like this, I have told energy balance on this thin wall of thickness delta x. So this is nothing but energy balance. So this is the theoretical part of our study. Now let us do this mathematically. So mathematically, we can write it as qx dot like heat, which is getting conducted at x minus of qx plus of delta x heat transfer rate which is going away from the element plus E dot generation like the energy which is getting generated within this element per unit time that is rate and that must be equal to delta E of that element upon delta T 
that is the rate of change of energy content of the element now from here we can write this delta e element as like delta e element we can write as e at t plus of delta t minus of e at t and this further can be written as m into c into t plus delta t minus of capital t at time t so this is basically the uh, energy content of the element which is expressed in the form of mc delta t this is nothing but q so this is basically the energy content of any body and thus we are expressing it as mc delta t so this is what i am writing over here this is temperature these t are nothing but temperatures and these are time so this can be further written as like here m this is mass and mass is nothing but volume into density so this density and volume is a into delta x that is this area a i have already told and delta x is the thickness so area into thickness is nothing but volume that multiplied by c and t t plus of delta t t at time t so this is at time t plus of delta t and this is at time t so this is at time which is slight greater than the time small t so this is basically the delta e element now this e dot gen can also be written as e dot gen is equal to small e dot gen into volume of that element because this is basically a volumetric phenomena that's why i can write it just like this and this can further be written as a into delta x into e dot gen so writing it in the main equation we can have q dot x minus of q dot x plus of delta x plus of e dot gen into a delta x that is equal to rho c a delta x t t plus of delta t minus of t at time small t upon delta t upon substituting those things that we have already derived now let us divide all of this with this a delta x then this a delta x will come down over here and i'm just writing it like this i'm taking negative outside so that we can write it as q x plus of delta x dot minus of q x dot upon delta x okay and plus e dot gen is equal to rho into c t t plus of delta t minus of t small t upon delta t okay so this is what we have arranged it like this now let us take the limit delta x tendings to zero and this delta t tendings to zero like for very thin element and for very small time we can again rewrite this equation as 1 upon a del del x partial differentiation k a del t by del x plus of e dot gen is equal to rho into c del t by del of small t so this is while assuming delta x tendings to 0 and delta t tendings to 0 and this is nothing but fourier's law of heat conduction so according to fourier's law of heat conduction q dot can be written as k a del t by del x so this is what i have used over here fourier's law of heat conduction so this is fourier's law of heat conduction so that was one thing and the another thing like we have used the definition of derivative and by using the definition of derivative i have written like limit delta x tendings to 0 q x plus of delta x dot minus of q x dot upon delta x this can be written as del q dot upon del x so this is basically according to the definition of derivative and after that we have used the fourier's law of heat conduction for q dot and that's why this whole was del del x k a del t by del x so that's what we have substituted over there furthermore in case of plane wall this area a is constant so i can take this outside over here so that this and this can be cancelled out and finally we can write this equation as with variable conductivity del del x k del t by del x plus e dot gen is equal to rho c 
delta by delta so this is our final equation but here the conductivity is variable that's why we have kept it inside the differential so our question was like this a large plane wall of thickness l is equals to 0.2 meter thermal conductivity k which is constant so the equation that we were having was this plus of e dot gen that is equal to rho c delta by delta so now again by reading the question let us eliminate whatever we don't need in this question so the first one is like thermal conductivity k is 1.2 that is constant so i can take this outside simply as k okay second thing is the two sides of the wall are maintained at constant temperatures okay so the other thing is like in the question there is nothing about generation of heat like heat generation so i can neglect this i can take it as zero and the other thing is we need to find the heat conduction through the walls under steady conditions and what is the steady condition steady condition means like temperatures at any point within this wall is not going to change with time which means that this term will be zero okay small t is constant it's not going to change with respect to time so that this will be constant and this will be zero and k is outside so t is now only a function of x not any other variable only a function of one variable like x so thus i can change this partial differential to total differential like d so d dx of dt by dx is equal to zero so thus i can write it as d to t upon dx2 that is equal to zero so this is basically the governing equation for this particular question like d2t upon dx2 is equal to zero where t is only a function of x but not time so the governing equation is d2t upon dx2 that is equal to zero this is our governing equation we have been given that t1 is equal to 120 degree celsius and t2 is equal to 50 degree celsius and areas length all other things are given so for solving this let us first integrate it once actually for getting the solution of any differential equation we need to integrate it so integrating it for the first time we will be getting dt upon dx that is equal to c1 the first constant integrating it second time we will be getting t is equal to c1x plus of c2 okay so we are having two constants like c1 and c2 so we need to have two equations for getting these constants so actually the equation is t is equal to c1x plus of c2 and this t is nothing but a function of x that we have already told so just putting the value of x one by one like t1 is 120 degree celsius and this is zero like here this is zero x is zero over here and here l and l is what that is 0.2 and we need to find the temperature value at l is equal to 0.1 so we are having these two x value like x is equals to 0 and l x is equals to 0.2 basically l is equals to 0.2 which is x is equals to 0.2 so we just need to put these two in this equation because we know the values of temperature at these points x is equals to 0 and x is equals to 0.2 so let us put this one by one like t at 0 we are having c1 x is 0 plus of c2 and there t is nothing but 120 degrees celsius so this is equals to c2 the value of c2 is 120 similarly putting x is 0.2 we know that the value of x is 0.2 plus of c2 is 120 okay and this t is nothing but 50 so 50 minus of 120 upon 0.2 that is equals to c1 so c1 is equal to minus of 70 upon 0.2 this is 0 and this is 350 so c1 is negative of 350 so now we know the values of these two constants what c1 is minus of 350 and c2 is 120 okay and our governing equation is what our governing equation is t of x is equals to c1x plus of c2 and c1 is what minus of 350x c2 is what 120 so this is t as a function of x 
now we need to find the value of temperature at x is equals to 0.1 because we have already found the variation of temperature within the wall and that was what that was this one okay with the values of c1 and c2 known now the value of temperature at x is equals to 0.1 is just put 0.1 multiplied by 0.1 plus of 120 that is equal to this cancelled out so 120 minus of 35 and that is equal to 85 degree celsius so the value of temperature at x is equals to 0 0.1 is nothing but 85 degree celsius that is the answer to the question number a now the other question is the rate of heat conduction through the wall under steady conditions the second thing that we need to find so we already know that q dot is equals to k dt by dx because over here t is only a function of x and we already know the values of k like thermal conductivity and area so that is 1.2 k into area is 15 meter square into dt by dx and what is t t is nothing but c1x plus of c2 so that is equals to 1.2 into 15 into the differentiation of this will give us only c1 okay that is equals to 1.2 into 15 into c1 is what this is actually minus k dt by dx okay with a negative sign why because with distance the temperature is going to decrease here the t1 is what 120 and t2 is what 50 so as you go to this direction then temperature is going to decrease so with distance like as this increases then this decreases so for keeping this as positive we must have a negative sign over here that's why minus minus and minus so this minus multiplied by c1 is what minus of 350 so now this minus and this minus is plus so that is equal to if you calculate this you will get 6300 watts in si unit so this is basically the rate of heat conduction through the wall under steady conditions so the answer to question number a was 85 degrees celsius and the answer to question number b is 6300 watts so this is all about this video guys thank you